Welcome back to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen! My name is Saiken and this is the legendary Iron Man Army of Two run where we are defending the Avenger for the second time. We're uh, going into the game on the hardest difficulty with only two and two uh, um, uh, soldiers only in the Avenger defense mission, just like the one that we did before. Since you can deploy two squads, I have deployed two squads of two. And our uh, tech teams today are going to be Hawkbite plus Roby, um, as well as Renvin plus Zirkim. So pretty similar setup the last time it uh, worked out well. By the way, it's not Roby. I need to correct myself. Roby's still on the Covered Ops mission. It's Hawkbite and Data, but Data is going uh, is is trying to kind of chime in, uh, chime in here. So this is actually what we're trying to do. We're trying to... We're trying to win with only four soldiers here. And the last time it worked out decently well. I'm not sure how well we're doing this time. A couple of chrysalids, which is interesting. Might as well position ourselves here. And yeah, chrysalis, like, they can be indeed quite dangerous, so I am not going to just charge in. My instincts immediately tell me, flop a grenade and start pulling them. That's going to happen next turn. First, the warlock is going to spawn. There we go. And from next turn onwards, we're going to have zombies and more zombies and even more zombies. Zero weaknesses currently, because there's a dark event uh, running. He can uh, summon um, even more chrysalids, kinetic, fight, uh, kinetic fighting when we're uh, not hitting him, immune to explosions, and whenever we, uh, after the first shot, he is going to increase his defenses. Beautiful combination of skills. Plus, as long as we're not back here, he's going to summon more and more zombies. Lovely. We just picked up a unique signature. One of the chosen is here. That thing is only going to make trouble for us until we deal with it. Alright. There we go. The chrysalids are on our trail. Couple of nice hits. More chrysalis back here? Are you shitting me? I don't know if that was a, a graphical mistake, like an oversight, or if there are really more chrysalis back here. Not sure, but I am pretty sure that we want to start with a rocket, uh, with a grenade. We need to dish out enough damage. That's basically the name of the game here. And this should kill two of them. Hawkbite moves in. Oh gosh, it's lagging a bit. I'm sorry for that. It was not a graphical mistake. There are indeed two, three further chrysalids. Bring it on.
We could use another grenade, which I will not do, uh, do not want to do. Or alternatively, which I very much want to do, we're going to use death from above. I'm probably still ending up with using a second grenade, to be honest. It's one down. That's two down. So if we were to really use this. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Saturation fire could hit two. I think we're going to do that way we're saving the grenades and we can still set at least two of them up for further kills all right Data moves in. Fortunately, this chrysalid dodged. But we can still use run and gun. Reload. I don't want to use the axe yet. There is a pretty solid chance with the crit that we're going to kill it. Elsewise, we're just going to stand next to it. Because then Bladestorm would have killed it. We're going for parry and an overwatch. That's seven chrysalids down and we're barely two rounds in. So I think that was reasonably good. We're going to see three zombies now. With the overwatch we might be able to kill one. If the zombies like move into us we might even be able to kill a second one with Bladestorm. So, that should be fine. By the way, having more than having more than two soldiers, if you're used to just playing with two soldiers at a time, right? Feels like so much more firepower. It's it really does. just this incredible amount of firepower that you get on top of it. Nice. Promotion earned. <laughs> okay, we got ourselves uh, another full another group that we just destroyed. This here should probably trigger another pack. All right, data could start to move up, to be honest. First things first, let's go for the stun lancer. I wish we could go up here, but that would require a grappling hook again. It's 
So let's see. We're immune against fire. We can kill the uh, the Sun Lancer. He's just going to use the shield. And the priest is probably trying to mind control, which everyone in the front line is immune. Is immune to. Let's see if we can kill the Stun Lancer. We can't. But we can shred it and almost kill it, which is pretty good. So with Lightning Hands, the Stun Lancer should actually be dead. There we go, okay. This here is a consideration. Might as well go for it. Because whatever it, uh, the priest does next turn, it'll take even more damage. Let's go for parry. And we're positioning... Zirkim here on top of the roof. The advent power cells are at maximum charge, Commander. Their cannon is primed and ready to fire. There's the Holy Warrior, which should trigger a blade storm. And interestingly enough, if it does so, both of them will die at the same time. Well, not in case of sustenance. Now he's just falling down. Okay, so I think we're going to get shot at, and next turn is zombie time again. Might as well get ready for it. Alright, first things first. Renman reloads. And Data is probably going to penetrate his armor. Might as well shred him for three. Yeah, that was good. This here is the kill. We're going to go back to here, so the Bladestorm will kill the Priest. I'm ready. And I guess what we can do is we can take shots at these vehicles. The vehicle explodes. And with the explosion of the vehicle, the Purifier takes damage and will be shredded as well. I think he stood right next to the vehicle. Now the cannon fires and we're going to see zombies for the first time. Uh, for the second time. Yeah, we're immune against his fire. Gosh, I remember how easy the game is if you have a full squad. It's almost impossible to fuck it up with uh, such strong characters. If you know what you're doing, of course. If you say so. Alright, Renman moves up. 
Nice little hit. Shreds and sets up the kill. I like it. Data moves up. I think we're just standing in the open here. We're immune to fire anyways. Might as well parry. And Zirke moves up. Plus Data takes an overwatch. So zombies should come now. Which means we're having one overwatch. And if they might run into us, we get a couple of blade storm attacks on top. Not the worst. Still got another vehicle that we need to get down. Both of these here, uh, both um, Renman and uh, Hawkbird will have uh, Bladestorm. So there's a pr pretty high sh uh, chance that the zombies will die immediately. There's the Bladestorm. Hmm. There's another blade storm. <laughs> All right. Reload. Let's kill the zombie. Good the death of these subordinates will prevent nothing. I strike for my people. Perfect. All of, the, uh, all of the zombies are gone. And this here is the second vehicle that's down. I love it. So probably, by the way, I can see that there is a sectopod. Uh, you just saw a little bit of uh, the uh, ground shaking. That's usually when a sectopod moves. That's one round for us to just move up. Reload, Overwatch, Overwatch. Alright, there is another pack. More chrysalids, by the way, on the other side. We may need to consider if we want to run in or rush in, because that could pull even more enemies. So this here is shredding both of the targets. Good starter.
Can't get both of them into a saturation fire, nor can I get both of the others in a, into a saturation fire. Almost got him down. We're going to give ourselves a protocol just to make sure that we have the threat assessment. Perfect. Love it. So let's kill the elite shield bearer. Uh, come on. <laughs> Damn it. Problem that I'm seeing is if I charge in, the chrysalids will definitely will definitely start coming. But I think that's okay. We can take them. Unfortunately, the Overwatch missed. So it's either either blazing pine opinions. Yep. There we go. The other option was immediate attack. One more round and zombies will start to appear. No, I was wrong. Zombies will already start to appear. Unfortunately, the Blade Master just doesn't deal enough damage. We need to upgrade uh, his weapon to a fusion lance. Like 10, 10 damage per hit are just so much more reliable. Let's see. I guess that'll be okay. This here. Should be okay. Which brings us to Implaceable. Move into here. Unfortunately, most of our shots now are 50-50s. Plus, he can also dodge. Uh, that really is disheartening. Moving out of the blazing pinions.
I hate Archons. I hated them in the four man run. I hate them in the two man run. Still 11 points to go. Shit. Unfortunately, we can't fly up there. So we're putting our Templar to the front uh, row. So he's immune to explosions, which means this here should not hurt him. I was wrong. Learned something. Blazing pinions do not count as explosions. My plan with the blade storm, nevertheless, functioned pretty well. Okay, we need to really hurry up. We're almost there. Moving to position. Ready to engage. Moving to position. Ready All right, reload, reload. Overwatch, we're sacrificing the loot. Reload and Overwatch. Let's get a bit closer so we can take shots. Alright, we know there's a pack behind, behind uh, the gun. makes it even more important to carefully approach it. So this shouldn't trigger anything. We're moving everyone here first. And now let's take shots. Okay, this should definitely explode everything. Oh, really? Did wow, he missed. Wow, the chain shot missed against the stationary target. <laughs> That's bad. You know that your operatives have really bad aim if their chain shot misses against against non-moving targets. Our positioning here is quite nice because they basically need to bypass um, Hogbite. So we get a lot of free attacks.
Moving just a little bit back. Not sure if this explosion will hurt the Templar. I'm actually not sure if it's considered an explosion or not. Okay, so we know there's at least one more pack and the chosen one back there. The biggest threat, the Avenger integrity and the durability that it has remaining is off the table with uh, killing the cannon and having 200 durability left over. It's more than enough. The chosen, I think, should now soon begin to just decide to come in. Alright, Overwatch Parade. I knew it, it was a sector pod. Oh yeah, be careful. Lily certainly has a good point there. Oh, second sector pot. Well, <laughs> okay. All right, great. Love it. Can we somewhat hit the sector port and remove the cover? No. Okay. But we can saturation fire both of them. That's good. I'm pretty sure we want to use the grenade this time because we need to deal a lot of damage. On the other hand, hmm, we could also use teamwork. Let me think that through. So if we were to take two shots here, or if we move to here, take two shots with that, how much damage would we deal? That's 14 on average, 28. That would kill it. So if we're getting closer, we could kill it then. Hmm. couple of things how much ammunition do we have enough okay so we're in full cover here that's good which means Renman takes the aid protocol for threat assessment 
So far so good. We're trying to eliminate the first sector pot. Which this year should take care of them off. Okay. Down to 11 hit points. Not bad, not bad. Alright, Renman moves in. And do we have Shredder? Yes, we do. Alright, so this should be a lot of damage. I said Shredding. Alright, almost got him down. We can't get... Uh, we can't get... Um, unfortunately, we can't get... Hair Trigger when we're using a Rapid Fire. We're giving over one action to Renman. To continue our his onslaught onto that sector pod. And we're going to use the other action to actually kill the sector pod here. There's a solid chance. Now, all of those couldn't hit him. There is another trooper back here, though. And I really want him to... Ah, the trooper is back here. Not enough damage. So we're down to 15. That's a good chance that we can one-shot it. We don't need our both actions to reach the uh, stun lancer. So we can take another shot. And if that hits... Very good. Now this here will be a kill. We're moving here. We do have untouchable and implacable plus an overwatch shot. So this guy will die with the overwatch shot. Now it's time for us to move in. It's probably going to trigger the, cho uh, the chosen one as well. But that's okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm not necessarily fine with that. We're still going to parry. All of them have tactic, uh, tactical analysis, so they can't really run far. Nice little damage. That's the first parry. Good job. We have no more parry left. Luckily, we're immune to the poison. Yeah, we have no counterplay against that. Okay, we could have had reflect, uh, reflect up or miss. This here, by the way, shows the strengths of uh, Bladestorm. It's just incredible. Nice. He starts to uh, let them all burn alive. No! <laughs> oh no! Why would you miss? Well, that's untouchable. We, we, he can't hit us. Hmm. 
Mind Control. Mind Scorch. Yeah, that's Mind Scorch. By the way, we're immune against it. All right. I think it's a great moment for just a little bit of healing. Combined with a little bit of killing the advents. Alright, so let's try it. Reaper, 66% chance to kill him. Very nice. Good job, man. We do have untouchables, so we can be a little bit more aggressive. either finish off this guy or start dealing damage to the warlock which is more likely let's try to kill the purifier real quick not successful Let's continue harassing the Purifier. Nice critical hit. We killed it. We're hitting the Berserk. And we're just staying right where we are. Because here's the deal. With one parry, we kill all of those here with um, our... Uh, with our Bladestorm. And we can parry his shots. Now, the question is, do we want to be greedy or do we just want to try to hit it? I think we want to be greedy. Let's go. Well, sometimes you win, sometimes you're greedy. That's a dead berserk. And all of the chrysalids will die, one after the other. Hawkbite just continues to clear house. That's the parry. I don't even know why he reflected. Probably, well, I know it. Uh, I thought reflection can only happen with your deflect ability, but apparently it can't. Warlock tries to mind control, which of course we're immune against. Alright, we're moving in with run and gun. Renman is taking the kill because I want him to be untouchable. That's it. 
And with him being untouchable, we can just move here. So that means his blade storm triggers. And whilst we're there, he gets company from Hogbite. Who now also has parry so that his blade storm can uh, so that he's Im immune and his blade storm can trigger and both of them do have a mind shield so they will now deal with the um, warlock this should trigger two blade storms nice one good job like it <laughs> Play storm is imbalanced. Yeah, mine scorch. Not really, buddy. Nice try. Time to kill. I got that one. Which now brings us to Implaceable. So we're positioning ourselves here. And we might even have trapped the Warlock, which would be incredibly amusing. Good, and by the way, we do have threat assessment, which means besides the normal uh, the normal blade storm attack, this here will also trigger an attack with the shotgun if he starts to move, because uh, we're now overwatching. All right. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We're overwatching. Let's get the last two cars down. He still can mine scorch. Or he's summoning a spectral army, that's of course okay as well.
beautiful part about the spectral army is if they all just trigger blade storm they will simply die Spectral army is done, my friend. Oh, dude, we do have rapid fire. Uh, 99, uh, 95% chance to hit and then we're missing him. I'm pretty sure that that will be enough. There we go. Some extra ability points. Yep, that was much easier than the first time. I love the end game because you have so many abilities to play with. Alright, I think we even killed all of the enemy picks, so this might be over. Yep, I think it's over. <laughs> Second defense was even... Not really a challenge. Maybe uh, the, the defense matrix that I'm now building up is a bit over the top because it would give us four more towers with plasma cannons on top of uh, them. Anyways, it's not bad. At least uh, the def defenses then would uh, would be even faster. So good. I think we're going with uh, Ghost here. I like the ability to just create that. Ionic Storm is also pretty good. And we do have a lot of XCOM ability points. If we were to respec this here, the question that I'm asking myself is... Yeah, probably Reaper would be a good choice. It's not... A, it's not automatically evident if it's a good choice because reaper means that you cannot use your parry ability when you have reaper active but on the other side reaper just allows you to deal uh, so much damage that i think it would be unwise not to use it so it's either that or psionic storm and i think we're going with reaper for now Such a beautiful Templar. Probably the strongest Templar that I ever had.
Good, and now that the enemy is defeated, I guess the question is, shall we take Edgar Allan Poe and Outrider and... Oh, we answered that already. Well, we're going to do that once High Alert um, is gone as a permanent dark event. So that's when we're going to invade. This here is good. We should probably take it. But let's make contact first. Send word of your victory today to all of your allies. For the misguided hope fuels my passion for the elders' vision of their demise. Alright, everyone's ready. That's actually a good sign. The increased healing time helped us so much. Yeah, that's a bit late, guys. So, let's see. We have so many... We have so many... Um, mechanics that uh, that we are what why exactly is the staff here idle oh because we're currently not having uh, I'll, I'll st still leave uh, the engineer here we're having so many engineers might as well put one here whenever someone's injured Just a couple more hours and we should be done with a signal boost. We had some soldiers requiring treatment after that last so there is an additional resistance contact. Roby finally got his promotion. Now before we go for another covert ops mission, let's take a closer look. All right, and we can also train Roby. He will probably need the most training because uh, technically specialists like have two extremely good um, uh, skill trees and you can go all the way down uh, in both of them. I like run and gun, will probably help him. I like a lot of the other abilities as well. Does he have Shredder? No, he doesn't yet. He has Untouchable, so might as well, instead of Hail of Bullets, go for Shredder. Which we definitely want to take. I mean, Haywire Protocol is also good. I'm not going to lie. That is another really strong ability. Scanning Protocol for Chrysalids is good as well. Ever vigilant can be good if you're if you're moving just with two soldiers and you you're forced to double move. I like the combat protocol as well; can be helpful. And capacity discharger definitely is a beautiful ability, well worth the fifteen uh, points. I am thinking about: do we want to go with capacity discharger or do we want to go with run and gun or haywire protocol? Difficult. I think we're going with Haywire because it's it's such a game-changing ability. The other ones are also good. And yeah, one of the things that I realized is we probably need more ability points. Now, with everyone here... With everyone here, we might want to use some of them and get rid of their negative traits. And to be honest, I couldn't care less about the squaddy. But we do have two negative traits.
on Renvin, and we're going to remove that. Probably a good uh, solid decision. I think we're fine with regards to the remaining traits. No one, of, uh, no one seems to have them, which is good. Yeah, okay, we're good. All right, back to Covert Ops. We wanted to reduce the avatar progress and uh, get dodge, which means Hogbite is going to be the one going onto the mission. And we need supplies. Once again, <laughs> we need to go to the black market. Perfect. We're starting to go to North America. That should be good enough. So, as for the resistance ring, reduce avatar progress. Yes, please. We're taking Hawkbite. Adding another soldier to help him. Maybe another specialist. They might be ambushed. That could happen. But I'm more than confident that Hawkbite will just destroy the ambush alone. He wouldn't even need a help. So this will take care of two bleeps of the Avatar Progress. And very soon we're going to see the next um, supply drop. So a suggestion here is how about we're taking some alien alloys and some and some Alarium Crystals, because we can really use them. And that was month number 10. None of them are really bad. Next Retaliation happens at the end of the month. And all of this, uh, all of the orders are similar to the ones that we had before. Let's double check what the chosens are currently doing. Yeah, we probably need to start the hunting process slowly but surely. And with our expansion, we're finally also getting some income, 370. And that is a nice little normal VIP mission, which I think we're going to do with... Let's take a look here, who's available. But I think we're going to do that with, yeah, with um, Edgar Alien Poe and Outrider, because they are the only ones available. Negative trade removal for Renvan. Uh, Roby and Hogbite are both out. So that's going to be interesting. Anyways, I'm going to prepare it for the next time. Thank you so much, guys, for for watching. We're still actively fighting back. It's month number 11 now, and we're slowly progressing to the end game. Um, I'm trying to not stall it for too long, uh, but I can tell you the uh, probably most important part about that run is going to be how well the fight against the Chosens uh, is actually going to, uh, to be. So we still need to power level 
um, at least a couple more rewards from the co covert ops missions which means Hawkbite and Renvin will very much focus on getting these rewards done. Other than that, I think we're in a strong position. Time to clean up a couple of uh, the facilities uh, just to reduce the avatar progress further. And yeah, you know what? Before we go to the Chosens, we, uh, we might want to combat the alien rulers. So I think this, uh, this month is a good start to go and uh, start cleaning up the alien rulers. Anyways, thank you for watching and we are going to see each other in the next episode. Bye bye.